I am already using Terminal more than 10 years, this is why in this video I want to share with you 5 tips that I am using with Terminal every day and they are really efficient. And just a disclaimer here, all these tips are for Linux based terminals, which means it will work out of the box in Linux and macOS and in Windows you will have problems. It won't work by default inside Windows console, but if you will install a console like CMDA or Git Bash, then it will also work there. And my first tip is a keybind Ctrl R, and a lot of people don't know about such a keybind. So actually here I am inside terminal, and when I am just hitting Ctrl R, as you can see I am getting here a list of previous used commands. And this is extremely effective when you want to search something, because actually you just use some command and you don't remember how to write it. You can simply hit Ctrl R and search here. For example, I don't remember how I used some git command, I can write here git space and then the name. As you can see it is working out of the box there, you don't need to install anything. So you simply hit Ctrl R, here you are choosing some command, you are hitting enter, then you are hitting again to apply this command, and if you just want to close Ctrl R, you are hitting escape. The next really nice command is actually a package, and I am talking here about this package which is called EXA. As you can see here, this is the official repository, Ogham EXA, and the main idea is that it replaces a less command. And if you don't know, a less command is the command for list. This is when we want to see the list of files inside current directory. The main point is that by default this command is really not super useful, it is not highlighting a lot. You simply see your your directories and you see your file names, this is it. As you can see here it is fully colored and this is how it looks inside my directory. So here I see all files, these are whites, then I see all folders, they are blues, and for example readme file is orange here and sh script is green. So it makes it much easier for you to understand what file you are looking for. And actually if I will write which ls, you can see that my ls command in say terminal is ls to exa with attribute l, h and a, which actually means I can write here directly exa, and this is this package, and it will render the list of the files exactly in default variant, like we see when we are writing ls. But it is not comfortable for me, this is why I am writing here exa, minus and here these three attributes. And in this case it is looking like a table, which is easier to read for me. And if you want to use exa, you can simply download it on your machine, and then you have lots of display options. So I highly recommend you to use it, if you want a better glance of your files inside current directory. My next recommendation is to leverage git commands. Actually if you are using git, probably you are using it from the console. And if you don't, I highly recommend you to learn how to use git from console, because first of all it is the native way, and sometimes it is faster, and you will for sure know what you are doing. The main point is that all git commands by default are quite verbose. For example here you are just writing git checkout, and then the name of the file or the branch, for example foo, and it takes lots of time. The same Name is for example when you are writing git push and maybe some branch, or maybe git pull. So it takes time, this is why we have aliases inside git. And you can do it in two different levels. First of all you can write aliases inside git itself, and people typically write something like git co and then the name of the branch. In this case you are using it like checkout. And it is totally fine for beginners, but you can make it even better. You can leverage usage of aliases for example for zsh or bash. In this case here I am not writing git checkout or git co, I am writing here gco and then the name of the branch. And it will be exactly the same. The main point is here if you are writing aliases for git, then you must always start them with word git and it doesn't make a lot of sense, because it takes time. If you are mixing aliases with git and with zsh, then you can just make aliases of the sh for example like this, and you are using git underneath, which is really efficient. For example to create a new branch, I am using git new branch, and here is foo, and as you can see I am on the new branch. This is extremely efficient, and I highly recommend you to write a lot of aliases for yourself, if you are using git. 
And actually one more cool thing inside Git that I'm using a lot is minus, and not a lot of people know about it. So typically you are on some branch and sometimes you want to switch back to previous branch. How you can do it? Obviously I can write here git checkout or gco and then master for example, it will work. But let's say that your branch was really difficult to remember and you can just write here minus. So gco or git checkout minus and as you can see I am here back inside on the master. Now I am writing this command again and I am inside foo branch again. And actually it is working by default with git, so I can write here git checkout and here is minus and I am on master, which actually means you don't need to install anything, if you just need to jump back to some other branch where you was previously, you simply can write minus. My next recommendation is to use a lot of aliases for yourself inside console. For example, you can make alias for grab just like I did. As you can see when I'm writing here which grab, as you can see grab is aliased to ps aux grab. Because actually I am writing grab typically with all these attributes and this is really tedious to use it like this, because in this case I need to type all this stuff to grab some process or something. In this case now I don't need to do it, I'm simply writing here grab mpd and here I grab the process of mpd on my machine. The next cool thing that I can recommend you is core utilities. And if you don't know what is this, you can install on your machine a lot of utilities to the terminal. And actually I am not using a lot of them, just three. As you can see here I have three aliases for moving file, removing file and copying file. And actually here I wrote command, then gmv, and this is actually core utilities package. And here I am using interactive and verbose. And actually this is a really nice wrapper because you have this interactive mode inside the console. For example, if you are removing a file or replacing it, you typically don't get any interaction from the console. You simply remove a file and this is it. And this is not cool because you can make a mistake and in this case the file is already removed. This is why here I can write which cp and as you can see it is also an alias. So what I want to write here cp and here I have an mp4 file and I want here to move it to full mp4. So actually here must be a downloads and here full mp4. I'm hitting here enter and first of all I see here a progress. And actually this is really nice, I see what I'm copying and where. And if I'm copying for example 10 files, then I will see all these 10 files directly. Secondly, if I'm hitting again and copying this file again, as you can see I'm getting a message, so this is an interactive console. I'm getting here a message override and this file already exists, and I can say here yes to override this file. And the same goes with removing, I'm writing here rem, and then here I have a downloads file that I want to remove, here I'm asked a message if I really want to remove this file. I'm hitting yes and we are done. One more thing that we are using a lot inside console is obviously navigation, and typically you need to write cd and then the name of the folder, for example tasks. And then we want to go out and we are writing here cd and two dots, then again cd and two dots, and then we are going inside if we need to. And actually it all takes time, this is why here as you can see I have aliases with dots to go outside to the parent. And actually this is extremely efficient because in this case I am jumping to tasks and now I want to go up. In this case I just put two dots and I am hitting enter and I am inside parent directory. So it just saves time and you don't need to write cd every single time when you want to go outside of the directory. And here is my bonus tip for you, which is working on macOS out of the box and it is called caffeinate. And if you want to do something on your machine and your machine should not go to sleep, then you can simply start caffeinate. So you are just typing inside console caffeinate and you are hitting enter. And as you can see this process is hanging here. And actually it will prevent your machine to go to sleep, for example if you have some script running and you need your hard drive or something like that. And this is really nice because you are getting the script out of the box, you don't need to do anything, you simply start it and you are good to go. Then if you don't need it anymore and you want to stop it, you simply hit Ctrl C and you are done. I hope that my recommendations will help you to increase your productivity inside the terminal. And actually if you are interested in 7 books that I highly recommend to every single programmer, make sure to check this video also.